promise you, no substitute. It's just me. Yeah, my, you do this back. The Maybach roof is back. Tell the whole world the truth is back. You ain't gotta argue about who can rap, cause the proof is back. Just go through my raps. Where my, tro where my troopers at? Where my hustlers? Where my boosters at? I don't care what you do for stacks. I know the world glued your back to the wall. You got a bra. Hey everyone, welcome to the Grandland video blog for books that came out on April 14th, 2010. As always, I'm Craig, your host. We're back, we've got the, the, uh, the intro back, we're gonna have credits back, we're gonna have fancy titles back. Very exciting to be back. Uh, thank you all for your patience and those of you who offered to help out and replace my software. That was very nice. Um, we got eight books to talk about this week. Uh, I didn't even look at what they are. Um, I mean, I just read them. So, you know, that's how it goes. Three Marvel. 2DC, 3 uh, Image slash Indie, so let's get right into it. Atomic Robo, Volume 4, number 2. Um, I don't know. I've said so much about this book, I can't possibly say any more about this book. It's so good. Uh, Atomic Robo goes to Japan and meets Super Mecha Action Team 5, or whatever it is. Uh, five people in Power Rangers costumes who are prepared to fight uh, giant sea creatures as they walk out and attack Japan. And of course, no, that's never happened until uh, now. Obviously, that's a great book. It's Atomic Robo, you know, in, in his usual reluctant uh, glory. So it's hilarious. It's, uh, this, this volume is all going to be supposedly uh, self-contained, four single self-contained uh, stories. And the, so far, the first two are great. And there's no reason to believe that the track record is going to change at this point. It's always great. It's Atomic Robo. Check it out. DC brings us Brightest Day, number zero. And, you know, this isn't too bad, but it's, it's again, uh, you know, Dead Man Returned to Life. Interesting direction for the character. And now he has to find out what these 12 people are doing. And he's, and he's inexplicably just teleported at random just so he can just show off all these people that return to life. You know, let's just teleport from location to location where you will see all these different people that have been returned back to life. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe it's the Peter Tomasi, maybe it's the David Finch cover, you know, makes it at least pleasing to the eye. And I'm go, okay, well, at least it looks good. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm excited for the Max Lord story that's going to happen to Generation Lost, but beyond that, I don't think I'm really all that excited about Brightest Day in general. So there it is. You know, again, still not my bag, but I get it. You know, I get where people are enjoying it. Over to Image. Image has Chew number 10, the end of the second story arc. And again, if you're one of the three people who haven't bought this book in, in its many printings, it's like eight printings of number one and all the trade paperback printings and, and all that, get on this book. It's hilarious. It's a real fun new angle for comics. Tony Chu is a sebopath, so he tastes things and then he gets psychic impressions off of it. Um, and this is the wrap-up of the international flavor story where we go to the small foreign country, the kind of banana republic of sorts of, uh, you know, where they're kidnapping chicken uh, chefs. And there's some really good explanation as to the meta plot, but at the same time wraps up the story arc very nicely. Uh, Lehman and Guillory are hitting their stride. They know what they're doing. It's great stuff. Samuel, M.F. and Jackson in Cold Space, number one. Uh, Boom Studios, of course, it's a four-issue miniseries. Uh, I, you know, I don't always like Boom Studios. I don't always necessarily agree with celebrity projects. And then sometimes when I do, I get in trouble for it because they end up swiping art. Yeah, thanks, Nick Simmons. Um, but seriously, Sam Jackson uh, supposedly co-wrote, I don't know, whatever. Um, it's still interesting. It's, it's about a guy. I mean, it's about, like, space. And the guy is out in space, and he's kind of like a rebel, and he's Sam Jackson. He looks like Sam Jackson. He talks like Sam Jackson. And when I say Sam Jackson, I mean any character that Sam Jackson has played, uh, from Pulp Fiction to Ultimate Nick Fury in Iron Man to whatever, you know. Uh, it's Sam Jackson. It's Sam, MF, and Jackson. That's what the comic is about. And so it kind of has a space... Uh, tinge of uh, Yojimbo to it, the, the old Kurosawa epic where you know there's two warring factions and, and he and he comes into town and pisses them both off and then you know he plays them against each other. Uh, you know m maybe I could be wrong, but that was kind of like the initial impression I got from the first issue. Still a very solid book. The art was good. Uh, Jeremy Rock, Eric Calderon on the co-writing did very well uh, structuring it. You know again, 
who knows between him and Sam Jackson which one actually plotted out the issue. But anyways, and, and Sam Jackson has some geek cred, so that's possible. But still, very, very surprisingly good book. Another uh, pleasant surprise this week was Iron Man Noir number one. Now, obviously, I've been a big fan of the Noir line, but this, you know, I expected, okay, it's the 1930s and the guy's going to build a suit of armor. I, I did not expect the pure adventure pulp idea of, of Tony Stark going to, like, faraway countries and, like, facing down death just to, like, climb through Mayan ruins and try to find some sort of, like, ancient relic. That's not modern Tony Stark. So it's a very nice twist. Like, what would 1930s Tony Stark be? What would be on the cutting edge of technology in the 1930s? Well, you could either make him like a Nikola Tesla kind of, uh, you know, experimenting with stuff like that, or you make him a pulp hero. And that's what he is. He's essentially a pulp hero. And it's a very interesting approach to the story. Uh, it is noir, so, you know, you get things like he has an assistant named James Rhodes. He meets a lady named Pepper Potts. You know, but it doesn't matter. I mean, those are the hallmarks, and that's the whole idea is that you're working within that structure to tell a new story. And uh, Scott Snyder's doing a great job with it. Fantastic book. Secret Six, number 20. And I know Blue Goblin has already given it his little book of the month recommendation. Um, uh, still, Gail Simone, Jim Calafiore, fantastic story arc. These are terrible, play, terrible people, but at the same time, they're compelling characters. You know, you want to see what happens to them. And, and this book is just chock full of those moments where just amazing, amazing things. And, and we get a little focus on Catman. Not that, you know, I don't think anybody could argue that he hasn't been the focus of this book because if anything, him and uh, Deadshot's little bromance here has become like the idea of the book. But, you know, he gets more of the spotlight and, and it pays off. It does very, very, very well. Lastly on the docket this week, Two Siege one-shots, and I'm just going to review them at the same time because essentially I have the same thing to say about them. Siege Captain America and Siege Young Avengers. Captain America is written by Chris Gage. Young Avengers is written by Sean McKeever. Uh, it's nice to see Sean McKeever writing good comics again. It's nice to see Chris Gage writing some fun, good comics as well, and he does it a lot more, a lot more often than Sean McKeever has. Uh, <clears throat> Nomad. Uh, <laughs> But the bottom line is, here are two good writers paired with art teams that aren't necessarily uh, A-list big names, but still very capable. And these are both stories being told within the idea of Siege. And uh, if you remember back to the old crossovers, you know, this is the type of stuff that would be like in an issue of Captain America. Here's the Siege cross crossover, you know. Here's a single issue that has absolutely no importance to the overarching Captain America story but it's just an example of Captain America's Steve Rogers and uh, Bucky walking through the rubble, trying to deal with what they're going to find in the rubble. You know, the big action hero moments are going to happen in the Siege book, but these are the smaller moments that are going to make for interesting characterization within it. Same thing with Young Avengers. McKeever explores uh, the Asgardian, who believes that, you know, originally his powers were based on Thor and Asgard, and, and they're not, but it explores his feelings for Asgard and, and, and what goes on there. And we get kind of a disposable side plot with Patriot and uh, Hawkeye, but, you know, it's, it's still well done. It, it reminded me of the Allen Heinberg days, which is something that really needs to be said. So two really good one shots, really surprising. I just happened to pick them up and say, well, I got to read some Marvel this week, I guess. And, and that's what happens. And, and they were good. I heard uh, Loki came out by Kieran Gillen and uh, don't kill me. I didn't, I didn't even order it for the store. I feel bad. I don't think I could have sold it. But anyways, eight books, all really fantastic books. Comics are back. Grandland Video Blog's back. Life is good. What more could you ask for? We'll see you next week.